Hermit Ducks, it's Simon here. Welcome to the Hermit's Cave. Just gonna adjust my uh, camera a little bit. It's very late at night, so there's lots of artificial light and everything in the room. I haven't done a video this late before, but um, I was eager to open this deck and I didn't wanna wait for another day or anything. So I thought, well, I'll have a look at it now. Um, and this is the second edition of the Transparent Tarot by Emily Carding. And it's released by um, Red Feather over at Schiffer. This is a really heavy deck. Now, I did have, or I say did have, I do have, sorry, the first edition of the Transparent Tarot, which, um, again, um, was also released by Schiffer before it was um, using the red feather emblem. So you can see the difference here. I mean, Schiffer have always used this red feather type logo anyway, but their red feather arm now, um, if you can see there, has this little logo, Schiffer and red feather. Um, and I really like this, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it comes that the first edition came in this big kind of set, which was quite hard to um, to get the book out. And the book is really thick and really meaty. And I really enjoyed working with it. Um, the idea of the transparent tarot, of course, I, I remember. And someone said you can, you know, pop them in a bath or wash them. But it's about layering. You can layer cards shuffle the deck and layer the cards on top of each other um, to create different kind of scenes and depth to your reading. You can also lay them on top of your your standard tarot and oracle cards as well. So that's the first edition. Um, and now it's been re-released in this set here. Um, and it says the Transparent Tarot Second Edition. And it's in this lovely compact case. So let's see what we get different here. So explore the transparency of your life in this second edition of the Transparent Tarot, the celebrated and award-winning tarot divination system. It, it says here that it's a must have for both readers and collectors. This highly innovative deck consists of simple yet striking images displayed on clear plastic, which are designed to be read in layers. With a new chapter, that must be in the book then, with a new chapter detailing how to use this deck in combination with other decks, tarot or oracle. Um, enhance your interpretations to unlock intuition and help discover hidden depths as you read. The book offers new keywords, charts, with key definitions to assist with reading right out of the box, as well as an in-depth meaning for clearer associations. Find original spreads and suggestions for methods that have been never before been possible. This deck offers a fun, original and insightful tool for divination, meditation, brainstorming, magic, and more for beginners and advanced readers alike. Um, this retails at 59 99 um us dollars but it is a a really you can just tell by the weight of it it's a really substantial um deck what i will have to do is lay down some uh either a white cloth um which i have or some white paper so you can really see these images because it's not really going to show up against a black uh black background I love the presentation. It's really, really beautiful. I like this on the sides as well. Um, yeah, really nice. Is it magnetic? Yeah, it's a magnetic uh, closure. Really strong, sturdy box. 
So let's pop out the book. Oh, oh, look at that. I like that. That's clever. So let's get some white paper so we can appreciate um, some of the artwork. So this is a nice big piece here. And it says, so in the pages of a secret book lies the key to your inner look. But it, the look is spelled, I suppose it's looking inwards as in inner look. This magic is a truer gauge. Oh, is it gaze? Actually, this, this insight is a truer gaze, the wisest light to guide your days. I like that. That's nice. So this is a, a large piece that just went on top of the book, but it illustrates about this sort of layering. So let's pop open. Wow. That is a chunky, chunky book. Oh, and we've now gone to colour. Was it colour before? So it feels actually... It's about the same, but it actually feels a little bit, it's heavier, might be a little bit thicker, very slightly thicker. Um, yeah, I think it's a little bit thicker, but there is a new chapter in there. And of course, everything in the original book is in black and white. Whereas now in the second edition, we have a lovely glossy colour images of all the cards. So that's that's really nice. Let's pop this aside a second while we have a closer look at the book. Let's have a drink of my Coke. So the transparent tarot. I need to remember the system with these numbers that go across the top. Um Red Feather, Emily Carding, all those who walk with me in the world and in spirit. And this is 2020, so it's not long been out. Uh, we have the acknowledgement and forward. Okay, so we have, let's have a look what the um, preface is to why there's a second edition then. So um, I'm very excited to be able to present a second edition of the Transparent Tarot. It's been over 10 years since I first published and it's been wonderful to see how people around the world have taken to this deck and the exciting possibilities it offers with more people discovering all the time. Now I hope I'll be able to reach an even wider audience. Uh, the packaging and presentation have been improved in response to feedback after the first edition. Of course, it's impossible to please everyone, but I do hope it pleases you. Other than this preface and a, a few small alterations, the chief addition to this accompanying volume is an extra section on using the cards in combination with other decks. See, I wasn't even uh, um, cognizant really that that didn't exist because I have overlaid them on, on other decks including its sibling deck, the Transparent Oracle. Never did get that, nor did I ever get the the light up uh, white background. You can buy those, I forget what they're called now, but um, they're like white lights that you can, they can light up and you can put acetates and things like that on top. I always, it was on my Amazon wish list for a couple of years, but I never actually clicked the buy button. There's only enough room to give a starting point, but I was never one to spoon feed. Take the inspiration and find your way forward. Most importantly, have fun. Wisdom doesn't need to be serious. Go forth, explore, invent, create and dream. Divine well. Uh, this is quite handy. A quick note for caring for the card. Some people have reported the old edition being coated in a thin oily film upon purchase. This may have been an unavoidable part of the production process, but is easily remedied with a soft cloth and mild detergent. Giving each card a wipe before use um, gives you time to bond with each card and not only makes your deck easy to use, but also helps you form a personal connection with the deck. And that was something I picked up on when I did a walkthrough oh, a couple of years ago on the first 
edition. Um, and then we get the introduction here. Um, now pick up your cards, look at them, and uh, go look through them and play with them. Whatever you feel drawn to do, except possibly spread them too wide over a patterned carpet. <laughs> yeah, it is good to work on a um, light background. I really like the style that the way this is set out. So, in the first part, we have what is tarot. The evolution of tarot, what makes the transparent tarot special and caring for your cards. The second part is your card meanings, major arcana, minor arcana and courts. And then the third section is how to use the cards. So unusual we get how to use the cards before, uh, after the cards. It would have been easier before, but... The Transparent Tarot offers a completely fresh perspective on ways of using the cards that have never before been possible. So what is Tarot? So a little bit there about Tarot, the evolution of Tarot. What makes the Transparent Tarot special then? Just have a sip. So the Transparent Tarot is a deck of simplified yet beautiful images that are designed to be able to be read in layers. The images are printed on transparent plastic so that the, when they're placed on a white background, they can be combined to create evocative scenes and pictures containing up to three or four cards each. This physical mingling of the cards has never before been conceived or attempted, literally adding a whole new dimension to tarot and a myriad of possibilities. Um, the images themselves are being conceptualized in a simple yet a profound way as possible. And I remember from the first edition, they really do draw on the main symbols of each card. So you, uh, yeah, you just, it's, it's amazing how the pictures build and take, take shape. Card meanings. Before we look at some suggested methods for using your cards, let's look at the meanings of the cards themselves. Again, I must emphasize that these meanings are only scratching the surface of what you'll be able to discover yourself through using the cards. So then we go into the card meanings and look at this. So this combines three, four, nine and 19, which is wonderful. So we have the sun card. Looks like we have the hermit card. Um, you know, the Empress and Emperor, etc. Lots of information for each card. So we get the Magician, what that looks like, the write-up about the card, and then the divinatory meaning. So a good chunk is given to, I love that, the High Priestess. And that's what, ah, that is what the large card was that went on top of the book. That's really cool. So yeah, so we get quite a lot of information here. So we can see from that picture there how the emperor and the essence of the emperor is his empire here. And the empress, which is the nature part build here with the hermit and the sun card so the hermit will be the mountain in the background if we go to card nine isn't this cool yeah so here's the essence of the hermit wonderful this is a great chunky book so once we get past the card meanings we go to card three which is how to use the cards Focusing the question, shuffling the cards, the cards of the day. Oh, look how beautiful they are when they're layered together. How you can do spreads, look. Think it outside of the box. So rather than just layering three or four cards on top of each other, you can actually create a storyboard or a spread here, which is really cool, isn't it? Look at that for storyboard. So 
So lots of spreads and lots of possibilities. And then here's a card form. You can instantly recognize this as Tower of the She and how you could layer a card on top of another card. And then there's a keyword table here, which is really handy. So we find a card like, we'll look for the Hermit, card nine, introspection, solitude, study, meditation, reflection, and the reverse being loneliness, boredom, mundanity, and Virgo. So it has the um, astrological associations as well for each of the cards. So that's really handy as a quick reference. And then tarot and the elements and other uses for the cards. So meditation and magic. Creating sigils, of course, this deck will be incredible for creating sigils. As you can see here, look. Love it, brainstorming, infinite possibilities. Wow, and there's Emily Cardin, professional actor, writer, and artist in East Sussex here in the UK. So yeah, I really, Think, think this is a fantastic chunky book it's 304 pages so the original book this has got a broken spine and everything thing because i've used it so much uh it's 279 280 so it's got about another 24 pages added um to it but I really like this version. Okay, so let's have a look at the cards. Oh, oh, we get a white cloth. That is a fab edition. Wow. And yes, all the oil in, sticky, oily uh, substance that was there to protect the cards has gone. Um, so that's not been added to the um I know, this is a great spread cloth i don't want to catch fire to anything so let's move the candles okay remove that have a little soap Am I the right way up? I most certainly am. Okay, so the best way to do this, I wanna make sure that the light isn't too blinding and that you can see the images. So let's zoom in. Okay. Pop that there. Or is it better on paper? It is a little bit better on paper, isn't it, actually? So let's do it like that. Okay. So here we have card zero. So we should have 11 going across. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Yeah, so making 22 boxes so you can identify them by number and as the picture builds up um so if we we have our fall here and then obviously card two is the high priestess if we was adding them together we would be able to see that we're using card zero the fall and two the high priestess if i just take another one at Random. There we go. That's how that's how they work. So for now, we'll just have a look at each card. Okay. And then we can put a few together at random at the end so you get get an idea. So here we have our our fall. And we get that energy don't we of the fall we've got the flower here which is normally in the fool's hand 
and we've got this beautiful uh, butterfly. I love this kind of reminds me of the um, the symbol in Reiki, Chikure. But I guess it's kind of like a labyrinth representing kind of a journey. But yeah, really nice. I'm so pleased that these cards don't have that um, that greasy film that the original ones have. And we get these two dragons here for our magician. I wonder if the book goes into more detail about uh, the images as well as divinatory meanings. So let's have a look. So we've got the divinatory meaning and then here it says to those who are familiar with the Rider Waite Smith based imagery in the tarot, this image of red and white dragons intertwining may seem very different from the magician we're used to seeing. A male figure standing confidently in front of an altar on which the tools of his craft, a wand, cup, sword and pentacle, the four suits of the tarot minor arcana are displayed. However, there are roots for my choice of symbol. I love this. So she goes into detail in the book as to why she's chosen the symbols that she has. Um, the robes of the traditional magician, the robes the traditional magician wears are colored red and white, as are the flowers surrounding him on the Rider Waite card. The infinity symbol created by the dragons as they weave around each other is the symbol strongly associated with the magician normally appearing over his head. And that's the lemniscate or the infinity symbol as we refer to it. Um, those familiar with Alistair Crowley's Toth Tarot may draw parallels between the dragons of this card and the serpents that weave around the staff in the Thoth's Magus. Also, he is portrayed in some decks as wearing a serpent belt, its tail in its mouth, a symbol of occult knowledge and the infinite nature of the cosmos. And then there's another two paragraphs about the symbolism of this card. So this is a fantastic, fantastic book. I really love it when deck creators don't just give you the divinatory meanings. They talk to you about why they've depicted the art or the symbols that they have chosen for the card to represent uh, that archetype of the of each of the major or minor arcana so we've seen this one which is our high priestess card which i think is beautiful this crescent moon the book of knowledge and here for card three we have the beautiful energy of the empress which is perfect, isn't it? The hills, the mountains in the distance, clouds, sky, flowers, really, really beautiful. I need to make sure I put these the right way back because of course, with having a transparent deck, it's hard to know whether you've, uh, you, you, there's no backs of course, so it's hard to know if you put them the right way around. I really love this for the emperor. So putting our emperor and empress together, what do we get? We get this beautiful scene, beautiful scene of the countryside with the city in the distance, the empire in the distance. Just gorgeous. So for our Hierophant, we get a tree, um, which I really like. And it, it, it's upside down, isn't it? But the roots, I suppose it's not. This is the branches going off. We just can't see the top of it. This would be the ground. But it kind of looked like the roots, actually, at first. But yeah, tree of knowledge. Our lovers, this beautiful heart, the yin and yang. Uh, they're coming together of two opposites, making one whole. Here we have our chariot, the white and the black horse. Interestingly, 
And I thought that when I laid down card 11, I thought, ah, strength, that's strength, not justice. So justice is eight here. Um, so it's not really following the RWS. I love the colors as well. Here's our hermit card. Wouldn't it look lovely if, um, hop at those bells, it's 10 o'clock. Layering those two together. Beautiful hermit card. Look at the light, you know, representing his lantern on top of the mountain, the solitude of this. And then we have our wheel, which is beautiful. Put them together. So simple, but I love the fact that we get the key elements, the key symbols. I like the four distinct sections as well. You know, and there's lots of... Um, references to that whether we're talking of the seasons as the wheel turns or you know the different energies um in terms of uh, elements sorry rather than energies representing the suits but and of course the the suits represent the, the seasons too if you so wish i love this strength card look how beautiful that is look at the hand so simple and and powerful lovely and again if we overlay something like the lover's card I love that oh and look at the hanged man <laughs> this little cocoon isn't it gorgeous We have the death card. Wow. It's really cutting through that wheat, look. And then we have temperance. Beautifully represented here with the water and the fire. And that melding of the two with the rainbow. Here we have the chains of the devil. I love it. I mean, I've, I've got the original, but because they were, as I said, quite oily, even now that you can see they're, they're really sort of greasy. And I did wash them, and wipe them, but they stuck together so much, I found it really difficult to shuffle. So this is, this is just perfect. And they seem, this version seem more vibrant as well. They seem to stand out a lot more. And here we have our tower, the lightning from the tower. Imagine having something like that. The star. Let's put the star, the moon, and the sun together. Are they all fitting on? Yeah. Aren't they gorgeous? I love that moon with the third eye. Beautiful. This is stunning. I mean, it might be a little bit more expensive than a, a regular mass market tarot deck but this isn't any ordinary tarot deck clearly i mean the book itself is is phenomenal oops that's a good thing about plastic as well <laughs> you can spill liquid on it look at that that phoenix 
and then we have the world card. So we have our judgment and our world cards. I'm trying to think of uh, all the possibilities. That is endless, isn't it? That we could lay down here. Again, we could. It's upside down. You can tell by the numbers, of course. Look at that. Gorgeous. Look at that. If I put them the right way around. Beautiful. So that's our majors. And then what do we have? We have ones. Let's lay down three at a time. So we get the energy there, the fiery energy. like how this is working because we have here you know if everything was in the center when we're laying down we're going to get very you know it's going to get very busy in certain parts so i like the fact okay we've got two at the bottom here but here we've got at the top same here so when you start to layer We're going to start, it's not going to be as busy. Notice now, because the boxes need to be transparent at the top to show the major, the minors are down the side. So you get your wand or whatever element you're working with, whichever suit of the minors you're working with is down the right hand side. And down the left hand side, you've got your numbers four, nine, five, seven, six, eight. And if we continue to add, we're putting 10 there too. So we've got three cards together here. We still only see one wand because they're all on top of each other. And we have six, eight and 10. And they're going together perfectly. And here we have the K and the N for the night. Q for the queen. Look at that, how that builds up. There's four cards there. And here's our king. So that's all of our ones. Let's do the same here. We have the cups. Beautiful, beautiful ace of cups. The two. And three. And we could always put, look at that, the ace and the two together. Then we can bring in the four, five, six, seven. We could have hours of fun here, couldn't you? And our king sits on top. So, I mean, that one has five, six cards. So I probably wouldn't have six together like that. I think the most I would probably layer on is three, maybe four on top
And then we have swords. Oh, look. But look how that lines up. beautiful aren't they just look at the artwork i mean one thing about this deck it might be something quite new but it's certainly not gimmicky you know this isn't for me gimmicky it's quite powerful using the tarot in this in this way i love how they kind of face each other or they can be back to back i love and remember, you can read stories, so you can add a cross like that. They look like they're dueling now with each other, don't they? Just wonderful. And then our final suit is the pentacles. So that's five of pentacles and six. <laughs> I could play for hours <laughs> with these cards. I'm having so much fun. And again, with the king and queen. Wow. So let's give it these a shuffle. I will show, have a look at some of the ways they shuffle brilliantly. Um, really brilliantly. This is such an improvement on the first edition. Okay, Let's split them. And we'll lay down three cards at random. So, actually that is the right way up. That's the Page of Cups. Hey, that's who I am in the tarot. And we have the Ten of Cups. Now that's random. <laughs> They're both one away from each other. And, oh, we have, that's upside down. We have the Magician. So if we were to layer, we would get that as an image to work with for the three cards. So you, your three cards spread. If you're doing one like I do at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, you could really, really think about that. You know, what do we need to do to manifest the Ten of Cups that we, that we seek? That completeness on an emotional level, that fulfillment, that happy family life, that whatever family is to you, you know, that, that, that joy. How can we use our tools, our gifts to bring forth? And just like with the, the page, you know, that, that element of surprise, that magic and wonder. 
with that little fish that we see popping out the cup. So, yeah, it's such a great concept. So, the Transparent Tarot, second edition by Emily Cardin. 10 out of 10. I absolutely love it. I think they've taken the deck. Um, they've made the necessary improvements. They've added in bits about working with other tarot decks. I love the fact that they use Tower of the She, which is a deck that I love uh, and really connected with quite recently after the Throwback Thursday. Um, I love the fact that they put in a white cloth as well. That's such a a good idea you know because a white background really is needed so by giving us this little white silky or satin I should say spread cloth is is really really a great great idea and the book is just wonderful jam-packed with stuff so transparent second transparent tarot second edition by Emily Cardin I love it what does it say here I miss this by Perry Lyons, Celebrity Psychic. This deck is a loving, helpful friend. It feels alive and reactive in a way no other deck has has seemed to me. And the sheer brilliance of layering the meanings provides an accuracy, depth of insight and clarity I would not have believed. Absolutely. And then here, oh, Rachel Pollock. The Transparent Tarot is a fascinating exploration of the way the cards can blend together, constantly creating new meaning. Every combination produces fresh images and new mysteries. Absolutely. I love Rachel Pollock. Have I ever told you that before? <laughs> oh, if I had a dinner party, I'd invite Rachel Pollock if I could have anybody from my guest list. Rachel Pollock and Pamela Coleman-Smith. Yes, please. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you for watching. Um, let me know your thoughts. I think it's a really cool system. Um, but yeah, and if you've got the first edition, do you plan on getting the new and improved second edition? Um, if you're unsure, I would highly recommend it. Um, All right, so until next time, go in peace. Namaste and blessed be.